Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll give you an example, a real example. As soon as I'm able to, when, when this COVID stuff slows down, I will never have fewer than about 250 rolls of toilet paper in my basement. <laughs> Warehouse. Hey, that's that's like rappers. It's just a spoil. They got like I got all the TP. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Oh god. I, I, once, once I, I, to, I did not. There will always be a stockpile of at least 250 rolls of toilet paper in my basement from here yeah. on out. I did, not, I did not understand when this crap busted out. <laughs> what is the deal with the toilet paper? Uh, because okay, give you the no, I could tell you what it is. I could tell you what it is. If you ever look at the lists of what you of the most valuable things in an apocalypse, toilet paper is always high up there. So Why? It's, it's just, just Why? because. Because some convenience people, it's a perceived if inconvenience. If big location needs to go out in the backyard or grass some leaves, I can make it happen. Yeah, yeah, I but guess. people, but if you want to, huh? So, so that is, it's I just will like have to. it's <laughs> just like having yeah. a having a backup having a backup whole house generator for your house, right. you know, and, and a propane right. tank. It's right. awesome, but in a true you know grid down situation, like your propane is only going to last so long. Right. You know, and the same thing with the toilet paper. Mm -hmm. And I right. think it was like an escalated problem. So it started out, maybe there was a few people buying and then everybody's like, oh, crap, there's not a lot left on the shelf. Yeah. I better get some. So they get it. And then every time it comes back in stock and then it creates this feeding frenzy. Yeah. And it's like, oh, feeding, well, I, feeding is right. it, so yeah. I think I th I came in before we started this. You guys, I could hear you guys from when I went to the bathroom, by the way. No, I'm just kidding. But you guys were talking about the beef situation. We could hear you too. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. <laughs> I don't call it draining the dragon for nothing. But anyway, so <laughs> when... Uh, <laughs> oh, definitely TMI. <laughs> <laughs> when, um, so, you know, do you guys think the same thing's happening when it comes to beef? Do you think we're going to run into a situation oh, like that? A hundred percent. I, I think... We're going to have a meat shortage. Uh, here's the thing about it is, the, when, when you're seeing diesel... At two dollars a gallon, one ninety-eight a gallon. Mm -hmm. The old refineries, I take it, that's a good precursor of what's coming in in the cattle in the port. I know it's totally two different opposites, but there's a glutton. Mm -hmm. There's a they have nowhere to put fuel. They have nowhere storage tanks are full. That's why they have. I mean, they're paying people to take fuel. Hmm. You know, suppliers are paying. You know, the, you know, distributors are paying. Uh, you know, just to take the fuel because they have nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. The same thing's going to happen. I've already noticed that. I bought some pork over the weekend. I'm in Iowa, baby. We in pork country. <laughs> pork country. Uh -huh. And I bought, when I cooked, I cooked Iowa chops this week weekend, dude. And I paid, I can't remember. It was, it was, it was pretty expensive. Why? Okay. It's, there's going to be a shortage of pork. It's going to be... Is it's there, be is a, there a production you know, shortage of, uh, of, of pork? Is there, or is it? What's the uh, yes. reason? I yes. don't know, man. Yes. But I know I paid more money than I ever paid for a pork chop. Really? So, so it's not it's not on the farm. That's not where the production shortage is. It's in, it's in the plants and, and getting the beef processed, and, and yeah. there's a supply chain issue. Mm -hmm. So Smithfield exactly. is the largest supplier of pork in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And FYI, as an aside, it's a Chinese-owned company. Yeah. Yep. If really? you didn't know that. Okay, no. Yeah, I was with Smithfield. I was, I was, I was with Smithfield, and I left couple years yeah. ago yep. okay. oh yep. wow sure well yeah. you could tell more than than i do so i i see it from a, a small producer standpoint and from a consumer um you know we've got a number of large plants that are shut down uh they had you know COVID issues and they and they shut down well it doesn't take many of those large plants i mean they're they're literally harvesting and processing thousands i'm talking double exactly. digit thousands a day Day. So exactly. when so when you stop that well, somewhere, yeah, mm -hmm. and 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 there's there's cold storage in America. So there's big freezers, and they have thousands mm -hmm. of tons of cold product because I watch the market reports every week as a farmer, and I I try and keep up with live cattle prices, live hog prices, and also all these futures, which is like the stock market. And mm -hmm. the cold storage report is always an important one. Because that shows the backlog of product that's out there, which will affect the supply and demand. So I know that exists, 
But at some point, when you're not producing those thousands and thousands of of animals a day, you know, to the end consumer, there's going to be a hiccup. There's going to be a bump. And people, y'all, guys, y'all think toilet paper was an issue. People will freak out. My phone has been ringing off the hook. Hmm. I'm very appreciative of the business, you know, and and it's difficult even. So our small local plant is still running and they do a great job for us here, but they can only do so much. They're at max capacity. Hmm. And, you know, I've got the TV network. Uh, would like to get product back on air so that we can sell it nationwide and, and try and, but you know, I'm having trouble even locally getting enough animals to supply the demand. I've got the animals, mm-hmm. but getting them processed. So it's oh, a micro right. chasm okay. of what's oh, happening okay. Okay. Yeah, nationwide. So, so it, since this all hits, you haven't been doing the shows because of the processing, getting the supply out there. Well, once we sold out completely of product, Mm -hmm. I I have been back on the network, Mm -hmm. um, and I actually did some cooking last time. You know, we want to keep uh, the... My, my face, how, however awful it looks, we want to keep it in front of the customer right. <laughs> and, um, you know, do some stuff on air. And, you know, I've, I've been promoing some products for them and, um, you know, but not able to get so to, to do it for TV. It's a little different and it's a little more complicated. So we have to take animals to the local processing plant, have them harvested and broken down. And then we have to transport that product to another facility that has some different machinery and they can repackage it and then ship it back to Atlanta. It all stays here in Georgia and it's housed in a, in a great frozen warehouse in Atlanta. And then once those orders, so I go on air and we start receiving hundreds of orders from all over the U S and electronically it comes in and we have to ship that out. But it's not just as simple as I take the cows to the processor and then it's ready in a couple of weeks and, and we go on air. It's, I guess that's what causes the supply chain issues Mm -hmm. when you get to these bigger and bigger companies. Mm -hmm. The only way I'm getting product to people right now, literally, is is a a driving distance. You know, in in a very small quantity, my phone's ringing off the hook. And it's not, hey, do you guys have some steak available for sale or a couple of pounds? It's like, hey, man, do you have half a cow? We'll send you a deposit now, you know. And and I am, you know, I'm I'm thankful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I I never want to be perceived as capitalizing on people's hardships. That's not what I was ever in the business for. I'm just trying to provide a solution because people, they, they, obviously food is a necessity. It's one of the prime necessities, air, water, nutrients. Those Mm -hmm. are the top three. You can forget toilet paper is ever up in that list. Yeah, you can't eat that. um, You can't eat that toilet paper either. So, you know, but but we're only able to produce what we can produce. And, you know, we're sending the truck literally into town. Like we're all our own little like kind of food truck deal we are licensed to be able to sell direct to consumer and uh we're we're getting it out as quickly as we can produce it but there already is a food shortage okay so you so you guys are saying that people are gonna like if they go into the stores they're gonna notice this already or is it just in certain areas that this is noticeable are already seeing it locally shopping for groceries. Mm. Uh, the meat counters in the local grocery stores are a little bit thin. I, I wonder how much of that is because of, obviously there's a supply chain issue when a huge yep. giant like Smithfield shuts down a, a processing plant that mm. does, as, as, as we'll say, double digit thousands of animals a day. Mm. I mean, that just exactly. goes away as long as they're shut down. And then it's the self-feeding frenzy of everybody reads the news mm. story. Oh my gosh, there's going to be a meat. Okay. I, I may or may not have brought home like four or five bags of chicken mm-hmm. from the grocery store the other day mm-hmm. because oh, I everybody the does. There's yeah. going to be a shortage. Oh my gosh, people are going to snap it up. I better get it now. I, and I just also want to throw in with the supply chain issue. I am not involved in the food industry in any way, but I did read an article that said that something like 60% of the American food production goes to restaurants. For like the last month, month and a half, most of the restaurants have been closed down. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So there's just literally nowhere to send. 60 percent of the food being produced so that's why farmers are dumping crops on the ground euthanizing that's what we saw i know lola and i were looking at something about milk right the same thing going on with milk dumping it on the floor yeah 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 because there's nowhere to send it well you know i i wanted to i'm producing 
Yeah. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad we got into that subject because, you know, I, I'm even though I am a cowboy for a living, I'm a, a beef producer, I've been in the business 10 years, I've seen a lot, um, but I'm certainly not the expert of all experts, but I just don't get the whole you know, euthanizing animals. They're, they're live animals. You know, right. we do, we do harvest. And, and for those that are just tuning in or, or might catch this out of context, we're, you know, obviously to produce beef or pork, it comes from a live animal. You do have to euthanize the animal to, uh, harvest it for yep. food production, but mm-hmm. that, you know, that's going to new nutritional value of people um what we're talking about here is is the media more i haven't seen the realities of how this is actually (laughs) happening but you know and and it and it could be you know what i call the media terrorist attack you know i think they like to incite uh fear and Mm -hmm. you know create news i I, I, I believe that man i really do Mm -hmm. yes um but I, but I just don't get the the fact that we're mm. euthanizing animals for no benefit at the end simply because all of a sudden they're portrayed as we're running overrunning supply. I get it, milk spools, okay, but that's not the animal itself; it's a byproduct. Mm-hmm. I get it, potatoes or lettuce or you know the list could go on and on. But a lot a living breathing animal, hey, mm-hmm. this is gonna pass, and that animal's still gonna be alive in a month. So I, I just I totally don't get the fact unless it becomes economics. So animals do reach a finish for, for yep. you know, if you haven't been in, involved in, in food production. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is at a certain age and maturity, and if you are finishing them uh, on a grain supplement in our mm-hmm. case or full feed uh, in the commercial market, um, so they, they reach a – point that they're not going to gain any more weight they're not going to get any fatter and they they will get a little more fat but it's all lost in the end because it's exterior fat exactly and i i and and economically if you continue to feed that animal more and more we say it just the money is just passing through the animal you know and and that could be the reason that they're doing it for economic reasons but if it is it's a horrible reason right you know because you know i I do harvest a lot of animals every year for people, but I have a love and respect for the animal. And I literally am thankful that, hey, this animal gave its life because it's going to feed a nutritional meal to this family that exactly. needs it. Uh-huh. And, and to me, that's what it's all about. That's yeah. exactly right. I, yeah. I have relatives in Arkansas who raised uh, chickens specifically for a, a, a certain – huge global multinational poultry processor that everybody knows the name of. Um, right. And <laughs> I'm, I'm just thinking about the way they, they operated because they would get literally in each chicken house, tens of thousands of chickens, mm-hmm. literally tens of thousands of chickens per house. And they would reach a certain age. And then the guys who were paid by the company to come in and catch the chickens and load them on trucks and take them to the processing plant. If, because the chickens were basically contracted specifically to Tyson. And if Tyson lost 60% of their customers and they didn't have anywhere to put, you know, they, they lost more than half of their customers for the chickens because the restaurants aren't serving. They, they just tell them it never happened. But if they were still in the chicken business, I can absolutely see Tyson saying, Hey, we got nowhere to put these chickens you raised for us. Uh, euthanize them. Sorry. We got nowhere to put them. Yeah. They, they, couldn't, they couldn't hang on to those So chicks. there's a couple of weird things yeah. going on here. Obviously, schools aren't open and uh, restaurants right. aren't fully open. I know they're doing uh, drive-up or curb curbside depends service. Depends on the state. Yeah, yeah, depends on the state. The the funny thing is, is also in states, um, I haven't seen it in Florida, but maybe in some parts of Florida that this might be happening. But there's states where there's lots of people on the uh, food pantry lines. Yo, yeah, yeah. You know, so I, I don't. I, oh, yeah, I don't really understand. Huge. Yeah, I don't oh. see how we're going to waste stuff when we also have people standing on lines. And then on top of all of that, on the outside of all of this, um, this is really a situation that we created for ourselves. So obviously, to me, there's something happening. People are getting sick. But the numbers that they try to scare us with, to go back to what you guys are talking about, the media getting everyone hyped up and scared so that we just keep our eyeballs you know, like glued on to them, uh, mm-hmm. That stuff they hyped us up with and even hyped up the government and got everyone like, oh, we got to do something, shut everything down. We created that. 
This oh, is yeah. this is a problem that we're going to pay for, well, and and lots of yeah. lots of companies are going to be laying off people here. Yeah. It's going to get it's worse, and and we created yeah. it. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.